Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast, where I coach owners of cleaning companies on anything and everything they're looking for help with. If you are committed to growing your cleaning company, go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com and get everything you need to create the cleaning company you've always wanted. If you want to be a guest on the show, you can email our producer, Natalie, at nat at growmycleaningcompany.com or give us a call at 480-648-5149 to apply to be on the show, ask a question, leave a comment, and I'm excited to talk to you. Today, we are talking with Bruce Whitlock from Whitlock Cleaning Services. Whitlock serves the Dallas-Fort Worth area, both residential and commercial. If you want to reach out to Bruce and his team, you can get a hold of them at www.whitlockservices.com. Bruce, say hello to Cleaning Nation. Uh, good evening, Cleaning Nation. Happy to be here today and happy to uh, uh, ask questions and, of course, get some questions answered. <laughs> Beautiful. You're in the right spot, my friend. Uh, before we jump right into the coaching piece of it, I'd love to get to know you and allow Cleaning Nation to get to know you. Uh, How did you get in the business? How long you been in? Do you love it, hate it? Talk to us, brother. Well, I, uh, I'm excited uh, to be in a business that, that, that I operate. I started in 2007 here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I got started because I was managing um, uh, a regional manager for uh, Icon Office Solutions. Rico bought Icon Office Solutions, and while I was in a, a regional role, I needed to get more education, and I never finished my undergraduate, so I ended up finishing and went, out and went ahead and finished the, the master's. And in the process of doing that, I rang up $75,000 in debt. So I thought to myself, what can I do to make some extra money? And prior to that life, I managed restaurants. So I called a friend of mine who managed uh, a bunch of Outback restaurants, and I, I asked him uh, if we could uh, support some of his restaurants by offering cleaning services. And, of course, since I've known him for many, many years, he said yes. And that was back in 2007. So we picked up three restaurants, and that's how I got into the cleaning business. Beautiful. So you've been in, uh, gosh, coming up on 10 years now. About 10 years, but really part-time. So I managed those businesses just to pay for my school tuition uh, or the, the note that I uh, had to, you know, to pay back the uh, student loan. That was about 800 bucks a month. So when I made 1000 1500 a month, I, uh, I, I, I didn't continue to go get accounts. And I went on and, and uh I was in the document management solutions group and ended up working for Pitney Bowes as a director and as a vice president. So I managed a hundred million dollars in revenue there and, uh, uh, indirectly and, and, uh, 20, 25, $30 million in new written business. And that business was acquired. So in the last couple of years, year and a half, I've been focused solely on the uh, cleaning business having experienced a couple of occasions where my position was eliminated uh, by acquisition. Um, and um, I decided, you know what, I'm a guy who gives everything to what my job responsibilities are. And having experienced two downsizing, I said, you know what, I've got a cleaning business that I've had for years. What can I do with the business that I already have? Can I make it grow? And, and, and that's where I'm at. So you've been full time for coming up on two years. Yes. Awesome. And do you have any employees yet, or are you just subbing it out, or doing all the work? What? How do you? How are you set for that? Well, we have uh, an admin, which is an employee, but we we sub it out. Uh, we ten ninety nine uh, the employee, and we have a number that uh, a number of ten ninety nine uh, you know companies that we we work with. So we sub really everything out, and we have about. Um, we started in the residential space, so we still have about 15 residential customers, and we have about 
15 recurring commercial customers and we're in the post construction space so we probably we have about four to five construction companies that we routinely do work for uh right now i've got a project going with jackson dean and uh uh jackson dean construction we're we're doing the post construction cleaning for the rei store in uh, fort worth and we have another uh, a number of projects uh going in the pipeline with different construction companies and we go after the construction companies because we really want the commercial cleaning business and that gives me a uh, uh access to uh, whoever owns the building so that's why we're doing it and of course post construction is quick it's detailed and it's a little more involved, but uh, we like to do that as well. Okay, cool. Um, all right, that sounds awesome. I appreciate you kind of getting us up to speed. Do you still have any of those original uh, Outback Steakhouse restaurants? We do. Uh, we, we 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 do have some. Uh, the uh, and but as I've gotten deeper into the re- uh, the cleaning business, uh, there's a lot more margin outside of that lane, outside of the restaurant space. So. We just picked up a new restaurant um, uh, and um, in in the colony area, but we don't tend to uh, chase restaurants because the margins are extremely high. So uh, we get called to do them, or we'll run into an opportunity, we'll take advantage of it, but we don't we don't chase um, restaurants typically. Okay, cool. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you kind of uh, getting uh, Cleaning Nation a little insight into your life and what what kind of business you got. How can I help you today? Well, one of the questions I have is just pricing. Uh, the there's a in Texas. I'm not aware of what happens in other states, but in Texas, it's a it's a uh, the cleaning business. There's a good a number of people that are in a business that I would call the black market cleaning business. So it's illegal. There's a lot of folks that rent a business card for $10, $20, and they're going out without insurance and, and, and doing jobs for, you know, pricing that we can't touch. So I'm really wanting to get a sense of what resources are out there, maybe web-based or from experience from different owners, what pricing is like, uh, what range of pricing is like by square footage in the commercial uh, cleaning space and in the post-construction space. So I would like to get a better understanding of what folks are charging and what their bottom price is and the range of pricing for the commercial cleaning space, You know, whether it be office buildings, um, schools, warehouses, just any number of, uh, of, of, of vertical markets. And what and what does pricing look like, and and as well in the post construction cleaning space? Okay, so you touched on a couple things that I think are both interesting and valuable to Cleaning Nation. First, you brought up a, a problem that I get all the time, which is how do I compete with people that aren't paying workers' comp, are cheating, um, are just not doing what they're supposed to be doing? Is that am I putting words in your mouth, or did I hear you right? No, I mean uh, that that that's the market, and and of course the um, the buyer is, is is ever so happy to um, to to hire those individuals, and that's why the political climate today is so interesting to listen to when we talk about the what 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 you know what what the choices are available to us. But I can tell you that the customer is buying uh, uh, black market cleaning companies uh, all day every day. And that's and we're, we're we're in that mark. We're competing against those folks, and and in some cases they do a great job, and in other cases, uh, uh, not so much. But they are definitely in the marketplace, and they affect pricing over overall. All right, let me give you a st- one, my, one of my favorite stories when it comes to pricing. I don't think I've shared this on air before, but I think it'll definitely uh, give you and Clean Nation some value. Uh, so there was a, uh, a barber guy that cut hair in kind of a strip mall. And right across the street, a new guy comes in and puts a huge banner. It's still there constructing. not even open yet. There's a huge banner that says $5 haircuts. And, you know, this barber charges $10, 20 bucks, whatever a regular haircut uh, costs. And all the employees and, you know, people on his side of the road start getting antsy. Like, oh, this guy's going to put us out of business. This is the problem. What are we going to do? And uh, owner didn't sweat it a, even a little bit. He said, this is going to be fine. I think we can actually grow our business with this new guy here. And uh, everyone looked at him like he's a little crazy. Uh, but uh, the kind of the seasoned veteran business owner, no problem, called his sign maker. And on the grand opening day of Mr. $5 Haircuts across the road, he puts up a huge banner that says, we fix $5 haircuts. 
and, and they did increase their business because that's exactly uh, – some people are looking for a $5 haircut, and some people are looking to not look like they're, uh, they have a $5 haircut. So he kind of, instead of trying to get, you know, with the $4 haircut or, or jump in the mud with that guy, he realized that people aren't, some people are looking for $5 haircuts and he's not, that's not the business that he was in, i.e. giving $5 haircuts. He's in the business of making people look good and uh, we fix $5 haircuts was a perfect way to kind of explain that to uh, any pastor's vibe that we're thinking one way or another. So I always encourage, I don't work with anyone that wants to be the guy doing the $5 haircut, i.e., if I just don't pay my people fairly or if I hire illegals or I don't do workers' comp or I don't – whatever the case may be, uh, I can't help those people. The good news is the people I work with, a lot of them are making a ton of money, and they do follow the laws and do pay all their fair share, and they fix $5. They fix $5 haircuts, and i.e. they fix – you know, a lot of their customers come from, well, I had a guy that – wasn't insured until and everything was fine until somebody got stolen or an act of violence occurred or um, whatever the case may be where we realize why people are required to have insurance and you know in some states it's like hey if you don't have if your cleaner doesn't have workman's comp and you're a business that's on you you're still 100 percent liable uh, for that cleaner's action because he could technically be your employee so long story short the the key to that operation is you've got to educate first consultants get paid far more than cleaners so you've got to move from give me x amount of dollars per hour and i will give you an hour's worth of cleaning towards you've got a problem that you need solved you I understand that problem. I'm going to fix it for you, and that requires a flat rate of X amount dollars per month. You can get a lot more margin with that conversation and that customer than you can with trading time for dollars. Does that make sense, or am I going too fast? No, no, it, it certainly makes sense. I just want – and and what you're saying makes sense. I had a customer. Uh, we won the argument, and I guess we won the customer. It was a customer of 800 square feet. Of, of feet of, of office space and it's got a big warehouse in the back and it was pretty grimy looking building and we uh about 1800 square feet and, and uh we bid it at about 600 bucks a month and of course he he reduced you know we came down 100 bucks but he had gotten three other bids and he, and he showed me all the bids one bid was a 299 the other bid was a two and a quarter um, and, and he asked for bids for one day a week and for two days a week. And one guy, he bid the building at, at two and a quarter for uh, two days a week. And then, I mean, for one day a week and for, for two days a week, he just added twenty five dollars. I'm like, you're, you're you're kidding. So so um, uh, so uh, again, I'm I'm always looking to see what 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 others are doing. And uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a tough economy, you know, people sometimes or oftentimes look to see they want to, uh, uh, you know, shave a dollar. And I understand it. And I'm also very interested in seeing what might happen and how, you know, this, these minimum wage laws, if they change, how it will affect the business. So I'm really more interested in a form, perhaps, of, of what people are doing, what they're running up against and, 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 and how are they wrestling the 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 uh, pricing issue with in which i'm sure is not a new issue in the business no it's certainly not and i yeah so long story short that that's the feedback i gave you that's how i would deal with the low prices the second piece that you just kind of brought up again in terms of well how do i find out what other people are doing and what the market value is i think this is probably the first time on the show i'm actually not going to answer a question because that's not something i would ever coach someone to do uh, which would be to spend any amount of time trying to find out what their competitors are doing because, quite frankly, I don't care. All I need to know is, is there enough um, opportunity in my market to achieve my goals? So I would only kind of engage in that conversation with myself on what are other people doing or what's out there just long enough to know, can I make, can I hit my financial goals in terms of gross sales and net profit for myself annually in this market? Once I determined that I could... I really don't care what other people are doing because I I am going to focus 100% on what my margin is, what I need to what I need to make, and I would spend my time on the right niche and being able to communicate with that niche and understanding their pain better than they understand it, so I can communicate it to them and we're having the right conversation. So I would really encourage to move away from what's everybody else doing, what's everyone else charging, because that really doesn't matter into what is it I need to charge to be profitable and what customers can I select that are most likely to be able to achieve those goals. So you kind of got halfway there when you said, we don't really chase restaurants because we found we can't make the margins that we need 
to get those. So I would really be like, well, who, where can you get them? Is it medical buildings? Is it, um, God, I mean, there's a hundred things. Is it car dealerships? Is it mortuaries? Is it, you know, a warehouse space? Is it class A office space? Is it property managers? So I would really spend all of my time working, finding on the one or two niches that are going to be able to create the value that I need and not really worry too much about what my competitors are charging because that's going to be what it is, right? If they're charging more, I'm still not going to raise my prices and try and gouge someone. I know what I need to do to hit my goals and that's what I'm going to charge. And if they're charging way less, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to lower my price and do a job for free or for margins that are below my, my standard because some other guy's charging less. I'm just going to either educate the people well enough so they'll pay what I need, or I'm going to go find a niche where they'll pay what I need or some combination of both. So if my competitors are charging more, it doesn't really affect what I do. If they're charging less, it certainly doesn't affect what I'm going to do. So I don't know that I'd spend any time uh, really kind of chasing down. What are you charging? What are you charging? What's the market going? Um, so again, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to avoid the question, but I just got to give you the best coaching I can. Does that ring true at all? Or am I just talking crazy? Well, I think one of the things you said that, that I, 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 you know, one of the things you said that I picked up is, is, and, and would benefit from, from feedback is what, what lands, uh, have, have more to offer. Now you talked about medical offices, car dealership, say buildings that, that perhaps would pay more because they their customers demand a a uh, an output you know to deliver their product so um, uh, that that was good advice for sure so uh, I would think that that medical offices because of the product that they and service that they offer uh, it needs to be hospital clean and, and they need to they need to know that that that, that that's a, a premium service and you need to pay more for that or high end car dealerships class A buildings and, and any others that you might mention uh, I'll certainly uh, grab my pencil and take a note yeah cuz the the big in the big shift is not just to find cuz it's not like there's some magic um, vertical where if you just do medical that's the answer or else everybody would be doing medical right so it really does vary uh, place to place but more importantly the key is to understand that each of those verticals and niches and personalities and people that are making that buying decision they all have very different needs and wants and what's important to them so for example if I'm a property manager my goal is I don't want anyone calling hassling me and I don't want any clients leaving. That's all I care. I want high occupancy and low low headache from my cleaning company. So if you choose that niche, you know, and some people go, Oh, I've done property managers are awful. Some people can say, Oh, I've made millions of dollars in property managers. It's not like property managers in and of itself is magic. It's the the magic comes in where you say, Because I only do property managers, I can communicate in them with them in such a way that I truly understand the value that they need. And I set my whole company up to be able to provide that value. So it's not really picking a magic niche. It's understanding that niche and, and work creating your whole company to serve that Southwest airlines is probably a great example. They, and I, I wouldn't recommend this for cleaning companies, but their thing was low price value. And the cool shift that they made from the very beginning was we're not competing with the other airlines. We're competing with driving somewhere. That's, that was their mindset of, well, it costs somebody X amount of gas to drive from, you know, Vegas to LA. We can fly in there for 40 bucks or some ridiculous amount. So they changed their whole company to fit that one niche client of, I just want the cheapest thing there. So they didn't do any nuts. They didn't have any first class. They didn't, they only hired 740 or 727. So they had just a certain amount of maintenance and they did all this other stuff that all revolved around understanding who their niche ideal customer was and serving that customer. So that's what I encourage. I wouldn't, I mean, certainly you need a niche, but it's not, I would rather a niche that you understand well and you have their pain and they have real pain and you have the ability to, uh, to communicate with them and solve that pain better than anyone else in the, in the market. I'd rather that with an average niche as opposed to being in the quote unquote best niche, but you don't really solve their pain better than anybody else. Is that, is it coming together in here? Or am I just going too fast? No, that, that, that makes sense. I mean, that's, that's for sure. A solution selling and, uh, I am, and solving the problem, taking away the pain, identifying the, the critical few that will drive that, that customer to a buying decision. Um, I've had my share of win. I've had some wins, but then I, I, I've, I've certainly found myself at a competitive disadvantage with with, uh, with 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 customers that are price shopping. But your your coaching is spot on, and uh, it, it it you know 
to hear it from others helps. So thank you. Cool. And yeah, a lot of what I do is I'd say half of it's new information. People are like, wow, that blew my mind. I had no idea. The other half is going, you know, I kind of knew that, but I needed to be reminded or hear it in such a way that I could actually put it into action. So I don't care which is which, as long as you get some value in Cleaning Nation, get some value uh, out of our time today. So that said, let's move you the lightning round, my friend. We'll give you an opportunity to give back to Cleaning Nation. Three quick questions. I have full confidence you're going to give three amazing answers. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? I guess the best, you know, piece of advice is to always deliver over deliver. So, um, and that helps almost in any business to set a standard and hold to that standard and hold your employees, yourself, the vision, the mission, stay true to it and, and, and deliver outstanding work because revenue will find you, you know, uh, you know, quality, uh, you will be found if over time the market understands that you are a consistent player and that you over deliver and you over achieve. Beautiful. Couldn't have said it better myself. Question two, what's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business that maybe we can learn from? Um, the biggest mistake is running faster than I have, uh, than, than I have the capital to run. Okay. And my capital needs, and I need to be able to forecast my capital needs. For example, on the post construction side, it's one thing to say I'm going to move away from buildings that are 20,000 square feet, and I'm going to go to buildings that are 200, 300, 400,000 square feet. Well, you need to make sure that if you're, if that is in your sales funnel and you're chasing and closing those deals, that you have done an equal amount of work in forecasting your capital needs so that you can handle the ebbs and flows of, uh, of receivables and payables. And so you have your arms around uh, 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 the entire sales process, including collections, or you can land a deal and not be able to fund it. Okay. Well said. And actually we did a, uh, episode. I don't remember which one it was, but we did Mike Coy. We talked about how to uh, improve your cash flow and your cleaning business. It's an awesome 20, 30 minutes. All right, last question. What's one idea Cleaning Nation can put into practice today that will make their business or their lives better? Well, uh, it's to really get your arms around the job descriptions and getting a real strong sense of what you're looking for in a quality employee. Uh, or quality vendor so that you are very clear uh, in terms of what you expect and what skills, attributes, and traits that you look for in the hiring process because we are as good as as the staff that we put in front of our clients. So you know, rather than being rushed in, in, hiring, in hiring people uh, uh, in, in, in a pressured situation, Get in front of that and make certain you clearly understand, expect what skills you're looking for and what are the um, the soft skills that, that, that you require as well. Or you'll pay the price in, in, uh, in, in HR issues. You'll pay the price in lost customers. And uh, you'll pay the price in, in, in not being able to lift your business through uh, referrals. So that, 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 you know, that's a suggestion that, 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 you know, that I might add. Great feedback. Thank you so much for joining us, Brad. Thank you for sharing your passion, your desire to grow, your experience. I appreciate you. Cleaning Nation appreciates you. If you want to check out Bruce's show notes page and discover everything you need to grow your cleaning company, you can find that all at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. You can leave your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. I respond to everyone. I will see you there. Congratulations, you are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.